Salvete discipuli. Today we have um, a lesson on the third, third IO, and fourth conjugations in the present passive system. So, <clears throat> a few chapters ago, we did the entire present passive system for the first and second conjugations. Today we're going to finish that out with a third, third IO, and fourth, which means that at the end of this last lecture, <clears throat> this video, you will know the active and the passive forms for the present, imperfect, future, perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect for all the conjugations. Good for you. Well done. So let's get to the slides. Okay. Like the present active system, the present passive system relies on a change of a vowel to tell the difference between the present passive and the future passive indicative. So um, just like in the active, in the present active indicative, you have o, is, it, emis, it is, unt, um, you are going to have that I telling you that you're in the present passive as well. Um, in the future active indicative, you have om, ace, et, amus, atus, ent telling you that you're in the future. Well, again, you're going to have that A and E telling you that you're in the future passive indicative as well. There are a couple things about the third, third IO, and fourth conjugations that are a little bit complicated. Well, I don't want to say complicated. There's a hiccup, however, involved, a couple hiccups. The first one, as you'll see in the charts that are coming up, um, the second person singular present passive indicative and future passive indicative um, are practically identical. The only difference is a macron. The future has a macron, and I'll point that out um, in a little bit. It has a macron over its E, whereas the present passive um, second person singular does not have a macron over its E. Um, the second person singular present passive indicative is one of only a few times when the third IO and the fourth are not going to be identical. Okay. Um, and you'll have to learn to form the present passive infinitive for third and third IO, which is going to be different from how the first, second, and fourth conjugations pass it, uh, form it. Excuse me. Um, first, second, and fourth conjugations form the present passive infinitive by removing the final E from the second principal part, from the present active in infinitive, and replacing it with a long I. The third and the third IO um, removes the ERE from the second principal part and, rem and replaces it with an I. So again, there's going to be a couple differences between third IO and fourth this time around that you have to be aware of. Okay, so here is how you conjugate a third conjugation uh, verb in the present passive system. Um, for the present passive indicative, you need your first principal part plus the R ending for the first person singular. For the rest of the forms, you're going to need the present stem. Now again, the I tells you that you're in the present, the U in the, in the third person plural, of course. And then you add the same passive endings that you learned for the first and second um, conjugations presence passive system, right? So R, RIS, TER, MER, MENI, UNTAR. Inter, excuse me. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that um, for the second person singular, instead of it being an I plus the RIS, like it is for, as you'll see in a little bit in the fourth conjugation, um, it's a short E. Okay, short E. That lack of a macron is an important lack of a macron. Okay. Um, Second, um, present passive infinitive, again, second principal part, you take off the entire ERE and you replace it with a long I, okay? Now, take a look one last time at the second person singular present passive indicative. You see that E, no macron. Well, now you see that the second person singular future passive indicative, oh my goodness, give me one second here. Oh, goodness. Sorry about that, guys. I cut us off. Um, anyway, you see that the second person singular future passive indicative looks almost identical. The only difference is this E with the macron, and that's a very important macron. You always need to um, articulate this macron 
um, to show me you know the difference between the present passive and the future passive in the second person singular, okay? Um, I'll just finish up with future before going to the imperfect. So present stem plus A plus R for, um, for uh, first person singular future passive. So R, Ares, Etor, Amor, Amini, Entor, okay? And then imperfect passive, um, as you would expect, the uh, present stem plus the E with the macron plus the imperfect passive endings, bar, bar, spot, tor, bamor, bamini, bantor. So let's take a look at our paradigm verb, ago, agra, egi, octum. Its present stem is gonna be ag. So first principle part plus R, agor, I am driven. But then ag plus the short E plus ris, so agaris a gitor, a gimor, a gimini, a guntor, okay? And then again, uh, we take our second principal part, remove the entire ERE, replace it with a long I, so our present passive infinitive is agi, to be driven. Now again, take one last look at agaris, you are driven, and compare it to agaris with the long E, you will be driven. So again, very, very important breakdown. Now, the third conjugation is the only conjugation where you have to be this specific about the presence or absence of the macron in the second person singular um, passive, present and future passive. So this isn't something that you have to concern yourself about with the third IO or the fourth, only when you have a third conjugation verb, okay? Um, imperfect passive, exactly what you'd expect. Agebar, agebaris, agebator, agebamor, agebamini, agebantor. Okay, and then the future passive agar, agaris, agator, agamor, agamini, agentor. Okay, um, again, third IO is going to have a very similar pattern to the third. It's just that you have to keep your eye um, in in the form for third IO, with the exception of the second person singular present passive. Just like the third conjugation, it's a short e. Okay, so you're not going to have an I here. Uh, but a short E, okay? You form the present passive infinitive the same way you do um, the third conjugation. Um, you're not going to confuse, however, the second person singular present passive with the second person singular future passive because the future passive for a third IO is going to be IE. So, you know, you don't just have a macron as the difference between the two. Um, as you would expect, imperfect passive indicative, present stem plus IE plus uh, the imperfect endings, bar, bar, spator, bamor, bamini, bantor. Um, and then the future passive present stem plus IA, IE, IE, so on and so forth. Um, plus your endings are ristur, mermini, and ter. Okay, so our paradigm verb is gonna be papio, capra, capi, coptum. Um, and again, first principal part plus the R, capior, I am taken. Caparis, capitor, uh, capimor, capimini, Copiantor, okay? And again, like the third, third IO removes the entire ERE from the second principal part, replaces it with an I. So copy is how you say to be taken. Do not confuse copy, the present passive infinitive, with capy, the first person singular present active indicative. You just have to remember now that this is an option and don't confuse it with another option that's uh, somewhat similar but not the same. Um, imperfect passive indicative, exactly what you would expect it to be. Copy a bar, copy a bar is copy a bator. Copy a bamor, copy a bamini, copy a bantor. Okay. Um, and then the future, the change of a vowel. Copy ar, copy eris, copy etor, copy amor, copy amini, copy entor. And actually, that's exactly what you would expect it to be. It follows the pattern perfectly. All right. Fourth conjugation. <sighs> You have to be a little bit careful with the fourth conjugation because in the present passive indicative and in the present passive infinitive, we have two ways in which um, the third IO and the fourth are not going to be identical. Usually, they are pretty much identical. Um, in the present passive system, we have two instances where they are not. The first one is the second person singular, of course. Um, for the fourth conjugation, there's no E without a macron, nothing crazy like that. There is an I with a macron, okay? So this is going to keep to the rules actually exactly like we like them because the I tells us that we're in the present. Um, so there you go. Rule follower of the fourth conjugation. So um, present stem plus I, and then um, our endings, wrist, ter, mer, many, and then IU, of course, with the unter ending. 
Um, present passive infinitive forms not the way that the third or third IO forms it, but instead the way the first or the second conjugations form it. So um, second principal part, just remove the final E and replace it with a long I, okay? Again, the imperfect passive indicative and the future passive indicative are gonna be exactly what you expect it to be. Present stem plus IE, except for the first person singular future, which is IA. And then our passive endings for the imperfect, bar, bar, spator, bar, more, bar, many, banter. Um, for the uh, future passive, it's going to be er, eris, eater, eamor, eamini, enter. Okay? So our paradigm verb is audio, audire, audiwi, auditum, auditum, sorry. Um, and so again, first principal part, audior, plus that r. I am heard, audiris, auditor, auditor. Audimor, audimini, audiantor. And again, we take our second principal part and replace that final E with a long I, and then you have the present passive infinitive audiri to be heard. Um, there you go. Uh, imperfect, exactly what you would expect it to be. Audie bar, audie baris, audie bator. Audie bamor, audie bamini, audie bantor. And then the future passive indicative, audiar, audieris, audietor, audiemor, audiemini, audientor. So make sure you have taken thorough notes on this. Do not just take notes on how to form it. Copy down the paradigm verbs. By going through your notes, I have noticed that some of you guys are not taking complete notes on these videos. Um, don't skimp. It's in your best interest not to. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow in class. Have a great night.